Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is Team Fortress 2. It's a very popular free-to-play Valve title available through Steam and I was today years old when I realised it released all the way back in 2007. It continues to receive positive reviews to this day and overall it has a very favourable rating. One very particular detail I noticed when reinstalling this classic was the System Requirements tab, which seemed rather outdated. Considering I've stumbled across a good few performance optimization forums over the years with regards to this very title. Maybe a Pentium 4 and 1 GB of RAM would have been enough a decade ago, I don't know, but I couldn't help but wonder what sort of experience we'd have if we stuck to this ancient and now low end hardware. And that's where my classic Pentium rig comes in. This custom build isn't quite as low end as the specs listed on the Steam site, as it has two gigs of RAM installed. This is simply to ensure better functionality with the operating system itself. After all, if the game won't run smoothly, at least navigating to the game itself should be smooth. There was also no specific graphics card mentioned for Windows, but the Steam OS slash Linux version mention an NVIDIA 8600 GT in the specs. I had therefore planned to use my 8600 GTS, but since upgrading the PSU and selling the old one, I realized I had no means of powering it because it uses an old school Molex connector, which you don't really see a lot of the time. In that case then, I decided to go for the recently tested R7250X. This is an entry level card from 2014 and I would still consider it low end today because when it comes to running modern titles, it won't really do that well, but it should have no issues here. At least this gives us a little more power to play with. After all, the Pentium 4 was my main point of interest today because I have a harder time believing that this can run the game. So how well does Team Fortress 2 run with these exact specifications? Well, it's tempting to turn everything down to low, including the lowest usable resolution, which is 640x480. This might seem like an obvious way to gain more frames, but in reality, it just puts more stress on the already struggling Pentium 4 processor. I jumped into a bot match to start with, and as you can see, not only does the game look pretty bad, but it performs quite poorly too. You might see me look at the sky or the floor at random times during the on-screen gameplay in an attempt to increase the frame rate and hit double digits, but unfortunately, this was a lost cause. We're using a slightly better CPU than is recommended, a 3.2 GHz Pentium 4 instead of a 3 GHz Pentium 4. We're also using more RAM and what is probably a better card than the developers had in mind as well. So I think it's time that the specs here were updated, to be honest. It's not a huge deal, as I'm sure most modern dual core or better systems will handle the game fine, and it is a free to play game after all, so you won't be paying for a game that you think you can run only to be disappointed, but you might be a little bit let down if you have bad internet and then you've waited a few hours to download it only to find that you can't run it smoothly because you've taken a look at these specs and you thought that you'd have a shot at hitting at least 30 frames per second. I then jumped into an online game and found that the results didn't really change, to be honest. The CPU is hitting 100% usage a lot of the time anyway, so it doesn't matter if you're playing with bots or real life friends, the experience won't be that great, and that's putting it quite lightly. Most of the time we were seeing about 5 to 10 frames per second. At some point in the near future, and without treading on low spec gamers toes, I do plan on making a couple of tweaking videos to get games like this running on hardware that's considered outdated. While the Pentium 4 might be a bit of a stretch, maybe we'll fire up the old Pentium D and see if we can get the game playable on that hardware. This will certainly be one of the games that I test no matter what I end up using. 
If we crank the resolution up then to 1080p or Full HD, giving the R7250X graphics card more work, then again we see around 5 to 10 frames per second. Again, this is because the Pentium 4 is maxing out, and even though the higher resolution puts more stress on the graphics card, the single core hyper-threaded 3.2 GHz processor simply cannot be saved. But what about increasing the amount of RAM? 4 gigs would mean 4 times the amount of recommended memory sitting in the system, but it could help somewhat to alleviate our frame rate issues. Installing the extra 2 gigabytes of memory certainly did help a little bit, and at some points we were seeing over 20 frames per second, but as the action started to heat up, the frame rate continued to fall, once again due to the CPU bottleneck. I wonder if the Pentium D will make a difference here. I mentioned it just now, but maybe I will source another one of those to make a comparison in 2020. Pentium 4 versus Pentium D in 2020. I can only imagine the uh, state of some of the gameplay. So once again, it doesn't matter if you're in a bot match or an online match with friends because the game will run very close in terms of performance in both instances. I did notice, however, that different maps will mean different performance metrics, and if you're lucky, you might even get to see the average frame rate hover around 15. It's still not what I'd call playable, and this is coming from someone who would be fine with 25 FPS, to be honest. So the uh, spec sheet certainly needs to be reevaluated to better suit the game's modern state, and of course, newer computer hardware. If you aren't sure if it will run on your PC but you want to play it then Team Fortress 2 is of course free to play so it's certainly worth downloading and running a monitoring program like MSI Afterburner at the same time to gauge an idea of the exact performance. Now I hadn't initially planned on testing Team Fortress 2 today but I did have an inkling or a desire to play it and when I noticed the minimum and required specs listed on the Steam page I did wonder whether or not they could really handle this title. After all, as I said before, it's seen many updates over the years, and I wasn't really surprised to see the lag and stutter that we did see. So I recommend a Core 2 Duo at the very minimum. I think the R7250X, this once entry level card, will do fine because it was barely being utilized in this situation, and on a slightly more modern system, it wouldn't really be that hard to run. So if you want it to be safe, maybe a Core 2 Quad and an R7250X, but if you guys want to see it, then maybe I'll put together a PC specifically designed for this title because it is still a classic and many people still play it. All that's left to say then is thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like on it down below. If you didn't, leave a dislike. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Let me know what specs you run with in your PC and how well Team Fortress 2 runs on that very PC, and uh, hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.